Okay gang, here we are again out in the backyard. Beautiful, hot, windy summer night. Tonight we are going to grill the perfect piece of salmon. But first, before we get started, I just want to talk for a second about the piece of meat that we're going to use. So just like a steak, you want to have a good piece of salmon, okay? a good piece of fish. Typically when I cook salmon for myself, I usually use wild caught and, and Alaskan salmon. And the reason for that is usually what you're going to see in the grocery store is Atlantic salmon, which is what we have here. And that's great. Um, salmon is a superfood, as we all hear these days. It's got the omega-3 acids, fatty acids, and that is really great for helping with hypertension and preventing heart disease. However, what a lot of people don't know is Atlantic salmon is a species, so it doesn't always mean that the farm it was raised on is in the North Atlantic, for instance. So uh, check your packaging. It's usually going to be farm raised. It uh, quite often is going to be from Venezuela, Vietnam, Chile. Um, it's going to have coloring, water added, and none of this is going to kill you, but it's not as healthy as, as finding your salmon from a, a better source or a good source. So be careful about that. A lot of those um, countries, when they farm their fish, they use kind of questionable sanitation practices and um, they're not always real sustainable either. So if you have the time uh, and the patience, check out you know more reputable grocery stores, uh, fish, uh, fish vendors, sorry, and uh, you know ask where the salmon comes from. Uh, I tend not to do wild Alaskan salmon for a deal like this because it's thinner and drier, it's going to cook too fast, and like I said, you're not always going to find it in the store. So uh, this is something you'll always be able to have. But you know, if you just take a little time, do a little research, you'll have a, little, a much healthier piece of fish, and over the long haul, that's going to work well for you, okay? So we're going to get started, just kind of like we did our steak. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to season our piece of fish, all right? So we're going to put a little olive oil. EVO, brush that around, get it on both sides, all right, first we've got coarse ground sea salt, fresh pepper, don't need a lot on the skin side. I tend to like to do my salmon with the skin on, especially when grilling. Hold it together a lot nicer. And typically when I'm searing salmon in a pan, I'll actually score that skin and open it up, get the seasoning down in there. It also helps hold the filet together, but when we're doing it on the grill, it uh, doesn't seem to be as big a deal. It, it won't curl up on you like it does in a pan. Don't know why, just the way it happens. So we're gonna season it really nicely with some Again, our coarse sea salt and our black pepper. Uh, sometimes I'll glaze my salmon after I flip it over with a teriyaki glaze or a soy mustard glaze. Uh, but you know, salmon is such a great piece of meat that we're gonna let the salmon be the star tonight and we're just gonna do her uh, pretty, much, uh, pretty much naked. I always like putting a little freeze-dried dill on my salmon. It uh, adds a little flavor and it makes kind of a nice crust as the salmon, you know, gets uh, caramelized. So, remember we talked about when we were doing steaks, we wait uh, on salmon, salt it right before it goes on the grill, okay? This piece of fish has been sitting out at room temperature in a cool room for about 20 minutes, kind of tempered a little bit so we're not throwing a really cold piece of fish on the grill. We salt it right at the end because if you leave the salt on for a while, it's going to pull the moisture out of the meat. But when you're grilling and you want to get those really nice caramelized grill marks, you know, you don't want it going on wet. So we patted it dry, we're salting it right at the last second, and then we're going to throw it on our grill. So we're going to use our hot grill, and before we do that, we're going to oil the grill grates too. So now we got oil on the fish, oil on the grill, pretty much guaranteed not to stick. So I just take the paper towel, dip it in some neutral oil, usually I usually use canola. There we go. Just to oil that down a little bit. I'm just going to lay our piece right on here, kind of at a diagonal. There you go. She's on the grill. Check the time. 
So the key here now, friends, is you gotta be patient, okay? A lot of people when they're cooking fish, fish tends to stick in a pan or on a grill. People get impatient, one or two minutes, they wanna take a look, see what it looks like. We're gonna let it go four minutes, okay? Typically with a piece this thick, it's gonna take four to five minutes, and then we'll be ready to flip it, all right? We're going for an internal temp of about 135, 140. That's gonna get it medium rare to medium. And remember, it's gonna raise about uh, you know a few degrees after we let it sit and rest afterwards. So that's where I like my salmon. If you just gotta have it well done, go ahead. Need to dry it out, but you can do that. So we'll let her go for a couple minutes, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll uh, flip her over and see how we're doing. Salmon's been going about four minutes. I'm gonna take a look at it now. So I usually can tell doneness of my fish by feel and appearance just because I've cooked so much of it. But it's a really good thing if you can get yourself used to uh, learning how to check the doneness just by feel or, or appearance. The way you do that, of course, is you just start by using a thermometer and just get used to checking, okay, at this temp it feels like this. And over time, you'll get good at it. So we're gonna take a look here and see if she's uh, gonna come off the grill for us. And it is, we're gonna give her a flip and we'll go from there, all right? So one thing you wanna remember is so I'm feeling this, it's still pretty soft and spongy. So it's gonna, it's gonna take a few more, quite a few more, probably four or five, maybe even six more minutes. Typically four to five minutes on the, on the flesh side, three to four to five minutes on the skin side, and you're gonna get to that 135 temp. Every grill is different, every piece of fish is different. That's why you really need to work with it. Uh, use an instant read thermometer if you have one to get, to get good at it. So when you use that thermometer, make sure you stick it sideways into the fattest part of the fish. You don't want to just stick it straight down into it like you might with a, a big steak, just because you're not going to get the middle of the fish real well. So keep that in mind. Uh, but let's take a look here. Let's see how she turns, okay? Look at that. Came right off, no problem. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over to a little uh, cooler side of the grill. We'll give you a look at that here in just a second here. And we're gonna give it another four minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna take a look at it, and um, we're gonna see how she's doing. So, we'll give you a look at that, baby. Looking great, huh? All right. Okay, gang, we're back. It's been four and a half minutes. I think our salmon's got to be just about there, so let's take a look. All right, that's looking beautiful. So it's feeling, to me, it's feeling pretty firm, a uh, little bit soft, so I'm saying it's probably about 135 thereabouts, which is really where I like it. I'm also seeing here on the side of the meat, you can't see it too well, I know, but you've probably seen this cooking salmon. As salmon gets cooked, you start seeing that white gelatin kind of coming out of the sides of the filet. That means your salmon's pretty much done. Um, you get too much of that coming out, in my opinion, you're overcooked at that point. So let's take a look, all right? So pull up the old thermometer. Okay, right into the meaty part, I got 134. So what I tell you? We're gonna pull her off, all right? I just do not like my salmon well done. When I'm picking up my salmon with my spatula. I always like to take a fork and get in between the grates, just kind of help make sure I let it loose. That is one beautiful piece of fish, I'm telling you. Just gorgeous. Get a look at that, huh? So what we're going to do now is just like a steak, I'm going to tempt it with a piece of foil. If I can get it out of here, there we go. We're going to give that about five minutes. Just want to let it rest. A little windy out, so I'm going to set that on. Four to five minutes, all salmon needs. Um, you want to let it rest a little, same as a steak, you don't want to just cut into it right off the grill and the juice will just come out, so we'll let that dip go and uh, we'll be back in just a couple minutes. Okay, we're back. I'm excited. 
Let's pull that foil off. Man, does that look good. Nice and juicy and plump, but not overcooked. See the beautiful grill marks, nice caramelization. This salmon's gonna be awesome. To make it even more awesome, I just added a nice little glass of Cote de Provence uh, Rosé, uh, predominantly a Grenache, and uh, you know the, the vibrancy, the acidity uh, of that, uh, that uh, Rosé is gonna be a great match for the salmon. So especially in the summertime, some lemon on the side, nice citrus, perfect match. Let's just poke in there, see how we did, eh? Look at that, just flakes apart. not all dry it's just beautiful I'd say medium okay I could even go with a few degrees less but for most people that's just perfect so there you go that's how you grill a perfect piece of salmon and enjoy a nice summer evening great match all right gang get at it and uh, if you need any help let me know